Chris, just a, uh, we see that Calvin Pickard appears to be starters, and that looks like he's going to be your guy. Just a thought and rationale and uh, giving Calvin the start today. Um, I think he's earned it. I think he's been playing really well, um, having a little bit of a rotation. And you think about goaltenders' workloads, but ultimately the biggest reason why he's starting is he's done a really good job since he's been here. When you're making decisions on goalies, it, uh, I imagine it, you know, it's how the guys are playing in the moment, but you also kind of have a responsibility to look ahead a little bit. How, how would you sort of weigh that out, like the, the schedule coming up versus maybe who's ready right in the moment? Um, yeah, this decision, obviously, with Pick playing really well and deserving this start, but also thinking about next week. And you've got um, uh, three games in four days, and you know, our starter's going to have two of those. So we're also thinking about the next week on what puts our goalies in the best situation for the next week. So I, I think it was, um, you know, the one looking at next week schedule and also pick deserving this game. The homestand has gone well, and I know you want to finish it off properly here, but what have you most liked that your team has displayed in this stretch of, of games on home? Uh, consistency. Uh, just... Playing well, all situations, you know, the penalty kill's been dialed in, doing really well. The power play's obviously been scoring. The five-on-five five defense has been good. We've had all four lines pretty much going every night. Um, everyone chipping in defensively. Our three pairs of defensemen, you know, I don't think there's, you know, there's some things that have been uh, exceptional, I think, are the special teams. But I think everyone else is doing their job. And um, when that's being done, especially with a five-on-five -five play, it just makes the team play um, so much better to, to watch. And uh, the results are definitely there. Um, I just wanted a thought on your fourth line. They drew a couple of penalties the other day. And it just looks like they're, there was a phrase that a, a former coach used to use about playing inside someone's equipment. And they're not a big line, but they seem to, to do that. They seem to kind of are tenacious around the puck with, with Sam and James and, and, and Derek Ryan. It just Can just maybe give them a thought on, on their play and, and how much confidence you're getting in, in throwing them out there and knowing that they're going to do good things? Yeah, I see three guys that are maybe a little undersized, um, but they make up with it for how smart they are and how hard they're working. And their play lately has been really helping our team. And whether they're drawing penalties or just spending time in the offensive zone, uh, scoring a couple big goals the previous couple games, um, yeah, they've been helping with our team's success. And checking the puck, you know, you can push guys off the puck, and they're probably not going to push many guys off the pucks. But if they can check and get inside guys' hands and, you know, put their body into guys' hands, the other guys, they can't make plays. They can't... Um, do anything. So I think they've been doing a good job at doing that. All three of those guys, like you said, are really smart hockey guys. They know the game really well. Like, how, how does that complement them, the fact that they all kind of think alike? You know, size is important. Um, size and speed is important, but I think the biggest attribute is, or attribute is uh, hockey sense and how smart you are. And I think that's something that gets um, neglected too often when you're thinking about, oh, he can't skate, he's a little bit slow, or he's not big enough to compete or do things. Well, they're smart enough, and I think you, that is the biggest attribute a player can have. And I, those three guys, they, they have that. Just wanted to check in on Dylan Holloway, what his timeline looks like, when he might be available, going on the trip, that kind of thing. Um, he's been on the ice uh, probably five times now, just light skates by himself. He hasn't been with the team yet. Um, when we go to New York for our trip out there, he'll be on the ice a little bit more, maybe with the team, maybe not, just continually speeding up his skates a little bit harder, a little more intense. Um, and then after Christmas, probably getting into some structured practices with the team. So he's not going to return before Christmas. And then after Christmas, we'll evaluate when, he, when he'll be ready. Uh, Chris, I know you say you haven't made significant changes in terms of the structure and process of the team's game, but Holloway missing that time, not practicing. Evander has missed a lot of practices as he's trying to play his way through something. Does that become a challenge in terms of the guys conceptually understanding sort of some of the 
changes that have been made in terms of how you're playing defense or maybe how you're, uh, you know, transitioning and that sort of thing? Um, you ask any coach and practice time is important. It's valuable and trying to get the most out of the players. And one way to do that is on the ice. Um, in the NHL, that is a huge challenge because you have to limit how many reps, how intense practices are because you are always saving up for the next game because you're playing almost every second day. Uh, so those practices are a lot shorter, um, a lot more defined. Uh, coaches have to rely on using video a lot more to teach rather than doing it on the ice. And it is unfortunate those guys haven't been out on the ice, but we've been relying more on the video teaching with those guys. And as we move forward, we'll be getting those guys back on the ice and having some more practice time. Don't think uh, Barkov played the last time you played Florida. Just a thought on he's one of the best two-way centermen in the league, uh, matching up against uh, the Panthers tonight. Yeah, no, a lot of respect for him. Um, obviously, can score goals, contribute offensively with no, no issues there. Um, makes it tough for other teams playing against him. He's a good defensive uh, forward and, and maybe the best with uh, Bergeron retiring now. Maybe he takes over that um, that title, uh, which makes it a lot more difficult. He plays a lot of key minutes. You know, you're looking at 20, 23 minutes a night and most of against other teams' top lines. And whether we try and match and get our top players away from him or we just go head-to-head, -head, we'll let that play out, but obviously with him back in the lineup makes it, our, um, makes it a lot more difficult for our team.